Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A driver going the wrong way on I-75 during rush hour slams into another car head on. Temperatures dipping below freezing again overnight, but a big warm up is on the way for the start of spring. Her case has gotten national attention now. A West Michigan restaurant owner who refused to comply with COVID orders for months is now in jail after a bizarre court appearance. That restaurant owner is spending the night in the Ingham County Jail at, until her $7,500 fine is paid and the state is satisfied she's not going to turn around and open back up. Marlena Pavlos Hackney is the first restaurant owner in Michigan to go to jail for refusing to comply with COVID orders as well as operating after the state suspended her food license. Mara McDonald is live in Troy and Mara, she was arrested early this morning. That's right, Kimberly. She had a bench warrant for her arrest because she had not turned herself in on this whole laundry list of violations that the state has thrown at her. So she gets arrested, taken to Lansing for this hearing, which was an absolute circus. Take a look. Marlena's Bistro is a popular spot in Holland. She originally closed during last March's shutdown, but reopened in the summer and opted to never shut down again and has been flaunting COVID orders like masks and density. We don't want in this country a communist regime who's going to dictate what we can do and what we cannot do. Pavlos Hackney has been a guest on conservative media shows touting her resistance. Today, the AG grew tired of the defiance and she was arrested and brought in for a hearing, which was anything but normal. Sir, you're also not licensed in any other state, is that correct? Ma'am, may I make a statement? You may answer my question. Are you licensed in any other state to practice? No, I am not. All right, you're also not licensed in this state. I am therefore holding you in contempt. This is Richard Martin, who is no lawyer, attempting to represent Pavlos Hackney. The judge was having none of it, sending him to jail. And stop. Pavlos Hackney was refusing to speak in court or even take the oath. Her real attorney then appeared via Zoom. She doesn't really understand, Your Honor, so I apologize for that. If, if you need her to ass assert that she's going to tell the truth, that's fine. I could answer for her. He explained he needed time to talk to her. Judge Aquilina allowed that, but things didn't improve for the Holland restaurateur after the discussion, even though her attorney said she would pay her fine and close the restaurant. So, ma'am, this is the wrong way to get publicity. It's the wrong way to be a good citizen. It is the wrong way to assist the public in a pandemic. Back here live and with that, Judge Aquilina put Pavlos Hackney in jail for the foreseeable future or at least until the state is satisfied that she's not going to pay her $7,500 fine, turn around, walk out of the lockup in Ingham County and go back to her restaurant and open it back up. We're live in Troy tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, a deadly wrong way crash on I-75 during rush hour. Just before 5 o'clock, state police say a vehicle driving south in the northbound lanes hit another vehicle head on, killing both drivers instantly. The crash was near Schaefer, but at this point, police don't know where that driver got on the freeway or why they were going the wrong way in the first place. On Detroit's east side, a double murder suspect has surrendered to police peacefully following an hours long standoff. It happened in the area of DeQuinder and McLean Streets near I-75. Police say the man was wanted out of Tennessee and barricaded himself in his mother's house. No one was hurt. Moving to tonight's coronavirus headlines, there are changes to some restrictions as cases continue to rise. We start with today's coronavirus numbers. The state reporting 3,000. 730 new cases and 15 additional deaths today. Tonight, the CDC says masked students can safely sit three feet apart instead of its previous guidance of six feet. Governor Whitmer announced outdoor stadiums can increase the number of fans allowed from 1,000 to 20 percent of capacity. For the Tigers, that's 8,200 fans at Comerica Park. With the state saying the increase in cases may be related to school sports, weekly testing of high school athletes is expanding. And we can take these steps because we know what it takes to bring cases down and to stay safe. But the path forward on further re-engagements depends on increasing rapid testing and continuing to ramp up vaccinations. 
The governor says $10 billion from the American Rescue Plan will help Michigan keep the virus under control and get money to schools and businesses. Dr. Anthony Fauci warning Governor Whitmer she may be reopening too quickly amid fears the state could be entering a new surge. Grant Herms tonight with his message for the governor. Whitmer and Fauci have generally gotten along during the pandemic. Whitmer often using Fauci's advice as a roadmap for the state. But today, Fauci's saying Michigan's path to reopening may be happening too fast, too soon. In an interview on CNN, Dr. Anthony Fauci saying Michigan's push to reopen may be moving too fast. We understand that. We really do. But just hang on a little longer until you get the overwhelming proportion of the population vaccinated. The nation's top infectious disease expert with a direct message for Governor Gretchen Whitmer. She's a really good governor. I know I think she's done some really good things, but I am telling them just hold off for a bit. Fauci's comments came the same day the state hit more than 2,600 new cases and just one day before the number of daily cases shot to more than 3,700. Michigan's chief medical officer saying today Michigan could be on the verge of another wave. But we're not out of the woods yet. And we could potentially be at the beginning of another surge in Michigan. This week, Michigan reaching the top of two dangerous lists, leading the country in infection rate and falling just behind Florida in the number of variant cases. Those variants often more contagious and potentially more life threatening. It also comes on the heels of broader reopening at places like event spaces and restaurants, a return to in-person learning and winter sports. In response, Governor Whitmer's office saying we can take incremental steps toward normalcy by following following basic public health measures, adding we will remain in close contact with our nation's top health experts on best practices until we eliminate COVID-19 once and for all. Whitmer's office also had some things to say about ramping up in vaccinations and testing, especially for winter sports. We'll have her full statement on clickondetroit.com. In downtown Detroit, Grant Herms, Local 4. Okay, Grant. It is the last night of winter. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. I don't know to slow clap that or sing or just that's just the nicest thing you've ever said. Andrew is in for Ben tonight with some sunshine for the start of spring. Hey, Andrew. Never thought I could convince uh, Jason to sing with, <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with the theme of weather and winter ending. Well, there's a first for everything. Sounded good, Jason. Sounded good, Kimberly. We're looking at temperatures right now that are certainly on the cold side. This is the last gasp of winter, right? Very fitting for the last day of winter, last night of winter, that we have some temperatures already in the 20s. We have temperatures right at the freezing mark over at Metro Airport, but under clear skies. When you join me tomorrow morning on Local 4 News Today, we'll see temperatures in the 20s as well right here in Motown. But if you can this evening, tonight, go out there and check it right now. Grab a coat, but you'll be able to see the planet Mars. Look at, look at the moon and then look down and to the right just a little bit. You'll be able to see the red planet, our next door neighbor right here in the solar system. We're looking at temperatures overnight that will be in the middle 20s here in the city down to about 25 low 20s in many surrounding areas so we'll need our coats again as we start off on our saturday but spring begins saturday morning we'll talk more about that the first day of spring first full day of spring and where temperatures go from here and your seven day forecast coming up all right andrew Three young men are now charged in a shooting at a Farmington Zap Zone. 19-year-old Kevin Bell and 17-year-old Quan Shea Mason are charged with conspiracy to commit first-degree premeditated murder. A third suspect already in custody has also been charged but not yet arraigned. The men are arrested after, shoot, after shooting at Zap Zone last month and damaged windows and left shell casings all over the parking lot. Well, if the warmer temperatures and sunshine weren't enough to tell you spring is here, the orange barrels should definitely do the trick. Big Beaver Road under I-75 is closed, so crews can open the new diverging diamond interchange in all ramps. The road reopens by 6 p.m. Monday, and then crews will head north to close the I-75 and Crooks and Corporate Drive ramps for two weeks. The pandemic is buying Michiganders a little more time to file their taxes. The new state deadline has been pushed to May 17th. That matches the federal extension. Last year's deadline was also moved for the same reason. State Treasurer says the federal stimulus program is another reason for that extension as taxpayers try to understand how that federal money and the pandemic is impacting their taxes. If you need more time, you'll need to ask for an extension and pay your estimated taxes before May 17th. 
Still ahead, Facebook is working on a social media channel just for kids. The concerns already being raised about the new platform coming up. And a maskless man is told to leave a restaurant. How the confrontation quickly turned violent. But first, a two-year-old boy was found dead inside his babysitter's home in Roseville last summer following a car accident that was never reported to police. Why prosecutors say they will not be filing charges in that case next.